Hello everyone, the TCG Leafeon here, and you might notice something different about the layout. It seems a little bland since it's nothing there, just the playmat. Well, that's because this is video is to follow up the learning of um, how to play the Pokemon trading card game. Today I'm going to go over the basics of the layout of the mat, or the board, uh, if you will. And I went over in the last video on this, I recommend getting starter decks for one major reason. They come with everything you need to get to learning to play. They come with a 60 card deck that is ready to be shuffled up and it comes with all the energy and Pokemon and trainer cards you need for a game. Another reason I recommend this is it also comes with a play mat, which also gives the guidelines for what I'm going to go over. And it also is room for two players. So you only technically need one. But these mats are built for decks that aren't sleeved. I sleeve all my decks. So I'm going to be using my personal play mat to go over the different areas. Another thing that's important to note on these is it has little hints and tidbits over what to go over with certain effects. And it goes through the turns, which I will iterate on another part or later in this video. Another thing that the decks come with is it comes with its own, well, older decks come with their own GX counter, which indicates when you've used your GX move, but a lot of the newer cards are V cards, which I've shown in previous videos, which here is a Stoutland V, which it does not have a GX move, so it is a lot different than, it, but GX cards are still used. And another thing that the decks come with are damage counters and a burn and poison counter, which is this one right here, which is very useful since a lot of deck, a lot of those don't aren't just on hand. And it comes with these convenient 150 counters indicating that 50 damage or 100 damage has been done. So that's what I recommend if you're getting started is just to go pick up a starter deck. They run about $10. And they come in all different types. The one that I opened on the previous video was... The destruction thing, which the Ace Puck one is Hydreigon. But today I'm going to use my personal deck to show you guys the layouts of the board. Which, here's my deck. And here's my GX counter. Which, your GX counter, when you place it on the board, can go anywhere. And I normally use dice for my damage counter, which I normally keep opposing the GX which these are your splink blank areas on the board, so that nothing normally goes there. There is zones across the board, which when you start the game, you normally roll to see who goes first. Um, evens, highest, whichever one you want to do. Someone can call it evens odds. You and your friend can roll. Highest go picks. But what you do is when you start the game, you shuffle up your deck. Whoa, whoops, if my sleeves went to work. And when you shuffle up your deck, when you're done shuffling, you can offer your opponent to do what is called cutting, which if they want to, they can take your deck and they can split it and put it back together to add extra randomness to your shuffle. And when you're done with that, you then place it here in the deck zone. And below it is your discard zone, which will be this section right here. And when you restart the game, you draw seven cards. And I'm showing this part of it because it indicate, helps with the zones. Because after you draw your seven cards, you then check your hand. For my case, I have no basic Pokemon, which is something that normally is an issue. And I'll explain later, which you would then have to reshuffle and draw seven more cards. Which, for the sake of this, I'm going to go ahead and just do it. Okay, we'll reshuffle, we'll cut it. Looks like I'm going to need some new sleeves for this deck. So let's redraw that seven again. Okay, let's look at this. There we go. There's some. There's a basic card. So you put your basic Pokemon face down like this. If I had more, I'd place them face down here. What's important about this zone, it is your active Pokemon zone. Which means whatever Pokemon is in battle will always stay in this front area in the between your two empty zones. And the rest of your basic Pokemon will go here. Which when you before you start the game, they stay face down. And after you've placed a basic Pokemon, you then take six cards off the top of your deck. And they go over here in random. These are your prize cards. We have six prize cards. For starting games, you can run two, three, four. Whatever you want to do for quicker games, you just run less prize cards. 
And the way, and th this is the win condition. The first person to either take all their prize cards or to cause the opponent to run out of Pokemon wins the game. So, and then as you play, when the game starts, you both flip your active Pokemon up, and I did not mean to bump the camera, and then you follow through on the game. So, on this, I will go ahead and play through a test turn, which on this, I will go first, and let me make sure I'm doing my rules right, because they've changed so much. I believe I still draw on my first turn. I apologize for this. Yes. So, I do draw still for my first turn, which I got a Psychic Energy. Which, for the sake of this, I will play through a turn as if I was playing my first turn. I cannot evolve, and I cannot attack on my first turn. But I can go ahead and tra play Trainer cards. So, I will go ahead and I will use a Nest Ball, which lets me go get a basic Pokemon from my deck. We'll go ahead and just grab this Stuffle, stuffle real quick. And then I shuffle, and I put it back. And I went and I used that card just for the sake of showing that when you put a basic Pokemon down here on the bench, it sits here, which means you can put energy on it, which you can only do one energy per turn. So my energy per turn, I will go ahead and I would place it on my Mewtwo. And then a thing about the bench area, which I'll go ahead and show since I'm not actually playing a game with anyone, you can have up to five basic Pokemon. So we'll go ahead and we'll just stick five basic Pokemon down. So I have five basic Pokemon on my bench. I cannot put any more down at all. And th there's some cards that let you put more, but they are very few and far between. And after you play a card or a Pokemon gets knocked out, it goes here to the discard pile, which I'll go ahead and I'll set my deck here since again, I'm not playing anyone. And every turn, so normally you can attack, when you end your turn, you attack. Well, so you can't always attack. Like, let's say I had Mewtwo back here and Stuffle was up here. Stuffle doesn't have any energy, so it can't attack. I would just simply pass the turn. Well, I do have Mewtwo up here, but since I would be going first, I cannot attack. You cannot attack on your first turn, and that's the only handicap to going first. But other than that, let's say we get through the game... And let's say I didn't have any of my basic Pokemon, and my Mewtwo gets knocked out. Well, Mewtwo has this keyword being a GX that says my opponent would take two prize cards. Well, I also don't have any Pokemon left, so I would lose the game. But again, if I did have my basic Pokemon out here on my bench, so we have that. They knock out one. I move another Pokemon forward, and that becomes my active Pokemon. So, these are the basic zones, and again, I know it seems complex, but I had to show the basic zones before I can go even more in-depth. And I'll go slower when I get to the actual going through the turns. So, again, I'll go over them, and I should be able to add in editing some keywords over them. And if not, I'll show you again on the starter play map. So, our zones, again, we have... The active Pokemon zone, which is right here, it's this square. And then we have our bench, which again can hold five Pokemon. Which I'll explain more on evolving and all that later, but we can have up to five Pokemon here. So one through five. We have our discard pile, which is here. Our deck pile which will be there whoops and then our prize cards which again i knocked down a pokemon opponent's pokemon i could take a prize card and add it to my hand and this zone over here is the prize cards and if you have any questions i would like you to ask them in the comments below so i know what to talk about more in the next video starting the next video i'll actually play through I'll pull out a second mat and I'll play through a turn or go through the phases and explain more on that. But this has been part one with learning to play Pokemon. I hope it wasn't too complex. And again, I hope to go more in depth in later episodes. Thank you for watching. Bye.